Gracious Heavenly Father, we just come into your presence by means of our Lord Jesus Christ and in the Holy Spirit, so very grateful for the opportunity that you've given us to come together in this way and feast upon your word. We just give you all the praise and the honor and the glory. I ask that you would filter out all that which is foolish and ignorant, but just seal our hearts, only that which is truth, the truth that you would have us know. For it's in Christ's name I pray. Amen. Hi, this is Steve at BlessedHopeForever.com. We've been studying together in the epistle to the first Corinthians verse by verse, and we are in the 15th chapter, and we're at verse 50. I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, neither doth corruption inherit incorruption. Flesh and blood cannot enter or cannot inherit the kingdom of God. I'm going to suggest to you there that flesh and blood is a euphemism for a human, so no matter what you do, you can't inherit the kingdom of God by believing, by striving, by working, by obeying the law, by anything that you can think of. You simply cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Verse 50 is saying that we who are going to inherit the kingdom are going to inherit it because of nothing we did. Not by believing, not by receiving, not by repenting, not by anything. We inherit the kingdom, dearly beloved, because we're children of the king. And don't rush past that word inherit there. Okay, we inherit that kingdom for one reason only, and that is because we're his children, and we are not his children by anything that we did. You know, from a physical standpoint, you were not your parents' children by anything you did. And so it's, it's crystal clear why the Lord in His wisdom gave us the illustration of birth. We are physically born by our parents through no choice of our own, no will of our own, no action on our part. And we are spiritually born anew regenerated, born again by God from above. We're born new creations in Christ by nothing we do. Not by accepting, not by receiving, not by repenting, not by works, not by keeping the law, not by anything. We are His children. Chosen in Christ before the foundation of the world. We've always been His children. Now, we may not have always known it. In fact, I, I would say that most of us didn't. There was a time where we didn't. The Apostle Paul didn't know it, uh, that he was God's child until he was over 50 years of age. He was also separated from his mother's womb. He was always God's child. It seems so popular to believe that at one time we were children of the devil and because of something that we did, because we repented or because we received, because we believed, then we are now children of God. And dearly beloved, that is not biblical. We've always been His, child, his children. There are sons of the devil. There are sons of God. And they do not intermix and they, do, and they don't change from one to another. Every plant which my Father hath not planted shall be rooted up. So we, He not only planted it, the plant never changed. A sheep was born a sheep. Uh, it grows the sheep and it dies a sheep. A goat is born. Uh, it lives as a goat and it dies a goat. So it isn't a human that can inherit the kingdom of God. It's God's children 
that inherit the kingdom of God. It's the kingdom of God. The Lord Jesus Christ is going to return. One of the great facts of Scripture is that Christ is going to return. He's going to return. And there's, there's so much Scripture on the return of the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, it's, it's unbelievable how little that it's really considered today. Uh, I wonder how many Christians really, really, truly believe that their great hope, their, their enduring hope, their wonderful hope is the return of Christ. You know, folks, some of the greatest fellowship that I've ever had, you know, has been around the return of Jesus Christ. And I don't cotton too well to the idea, you know, well, I think that's sort of wonderful, Steve. You know, the Lord's coming, but I sure hope He don't come until I get my new carpet installed. You know, I, folks, I can't imagine comparing new carpet to the hope of the return of the Lord Jesus Christ. There is more scripture dealing with his return than than there is of almost any other theological thought you know we, we think about how much scripture there is on the trinity and how much scripture that there is on the fall but folks there's so much on the return of the lord jesus christ 35 percent of the Bible is prophetic and it's in centered around his return. The Lord's going to return. Neither, neither doth corruption inherit incorruption. And folks, I read that as to say that God doesn't put new wine in old wineskins. You, you were made a new creation. You are a dual natured creature. Of course, corruption doesn't inherit corruption, you know, because we were crucified with Christ. God has nothing to do with the old man. He's not fixing up or patching up the, the old sinful nature. God has nothing to do with the flesh. That's why you have a new man, and that new man cannot sin, as we saw in our study through 1 John. It cannot sin. And that you, that, that you that's in possession of a new man, a, the, that person who's a new creation in Christ, you're going to leave that old body of flesh behind and you are going to inherit incorruption. God is going to rapture not only His church, but He's going to rapture saints. They didn't become saints by anything they did. They didn't become saints when they were... They don't become saints when they're raptured, Okay? They inherit incorruption. Behold, I tell you a mystery. My Bible says, uh, show, show you a mystery. The word's lego. Behold, I tell you a mystery, a secret. We shall not all sleep. The Almighty God, the creator of heaven and earth, has Paul write, we shall not all die. Paul anticipated the return of the Lord in his lifetime. Every, every generation since Christ has believed that he would return while they were alive. So, of course, we shall not all die. I mean, you know, it's, uh, folks, the church is going to be here when the Lord returns. The church has got to be here when the Lord returns. Of course, we're not going to all die. So we shall not all sleep. We shall all be changed. I take that uh, to mean that our lowly bodies will be fashioned like unto His own glorious body. We'll, we'll have a, a marvelous new body like unto His own glorious body. No more pain, no more sorrow, no more suffering. You know, it doesn't say some of us will be changed. It doesn't say that. Or, or we may be changed, you know. It kind of depends on how God feels at the moment. No, it's a, it is a, an indicative statement, as solid as it could possibly be. We shall be changed in a moment, 
And the word moment there is, is atomos in the Greek. That's from where we get our word atom. Uh, in the Greek mind, it was the, the smallest indivisible particle. That's pretty fast. In the twinkling of an eye. Not, not an eye blink, but just a twinkle. Okay, and, and it'll occur at the last trump. Now that is not Trump's second term, okay? Un unless it turns out to be. I think the last Trump signals last things. Uh, I think that primarily it's a signal for victory. Could signal the end of the present dispensation of grace. Um, I see no evidence anywhere in Scripture of the world hearing that. I think, I think it will be that incorruptible body that is changed in the twinkling of an eye that hears it, resulting in the tribulation period, which we know was followed by the kingdom age, the thousand-year earthly reign of Christ on earth. The dead shall be raised incorruptible. And folks, that's what we are. Corruptible. You know, if you're really young, you, you don't really, I don't think you don't quite understand that yet. As you get older, you kind of do. In a moment, at the twinkling of an eye, for the trumpet shall sound, the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we absolutely will be changed. And what a hope that is. It will happen. It'll happen whether you like it or not. It will happen. You know, whether you miss your new carpet or not, you're going to be changed. You're going to be raised incorruptible. Right now, we are in that corruptible mess. But we're going to be raised incorruptible. Verse 54 so when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then, underline then, shall be brought to pass. The saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. Death is swallowed up in victory. What is that saying? Isaiah 25, 8. Let me read this to you. Isaiah 25, 8. All right. He will swallow up death in victory, and the Lord God will wipe away tears from off all faces, and the rebuke of His people shall He take away from off all the earth, for the Lord hath spoken it. Verse 55 of our text says, O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? And one of the things, folks, that we are delivered from is the fear of death. Fear from, from the problem of, of keeping the law, the, fear, the guilt of sin. There, there are so many things that the Lord Jesus Christ delivers you from if you really believe Him. You know, there's, there are multitudes of, of people who profess to be Christians who, who don't know that they've been delivered from the fear of death. You know, I, 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 th I think to, to fear death when you've been delivered from death sort of has, has to have a sense of death attached to it. You know, He not only died in your place so that you are a new creation in Christ, you're not born again by your will, by your faith, by your repentance or good works. Or You're born again by the will of God. That's it. But if you trust Him and if you believe Him, you're saved from a lot of things. And one of those is the fear of death. O oh, death, where is thy sting? Well, it's done away in Christ. 
Death is swallowed up in victory. O Hades, or grave, where is thy victory? There, there is no victory. Death was swallowed up in victory. There's no victory apart from what Christ did. Think last trump. Okay, the next verse. I really love the next verse. The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. What a verse. What a verse. Folks, to me, that's sin led to death. Okay, separation from God. And there's no human way back. The strength of sin is the law. So well, that sort of puts us in a, as my grandma would say, puts us in a pickle. Until we read 57. But thanks be to God which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ, who always gives us the victory by means of our Lord Jesus Christ. Not by anything that we did. You don't have the victory because you trusted Him, okay? You don't have the victory because, you know, you're strong and, and you can face difficulty and suffering and, and persecution with strength and courage and, and someone else can't, and so they're not victorious. The only way, dearly beloved, that you have the victory is by means of Jesus Christ who swallowed up death in victory because he died in your place. And the present active participle is saying that God is continuously giving us the victory. It's not that you he gave it to you and that's it. Okay. That's it's not an aorist tense. Okay, you know, it sees that sees the action as a whole. It's a it's a present active participle. We have victory because of Jesus Christ. It's an ongoing giving of victory. The victory is His, not ours, but it's conferred to us because, why? Because He swallowed up death in victory. Therefore, my beloved brother, okay, well, sure, Paul wrote this, but God is not ashamed to call you brother. Not only that, He says you're loved brethren. You know, He translated me into the kingdom of His dear Son. He made me His own beloved child. You know, and then a verse that ought to give you such comfort. Verse 58. I know it does me. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord, Always abounding in the Lord's work, not ours, dearly beloved. You know, so much preaching is, is on what, you know, your work ought to be. In Ephesians, uh, for by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. For we are His workmanship created in Christ Jesus. Not, not created in the devil and converted somehow so that we were created in Christ Jesus. And as that's upon good works, epi in the Greek, upon good works, which God has before ordained that we should walk in them. What good works? And you'd think that every Christian would, should, would want to know this. The works of Christ. Always abounding in the work of the Lord. Not, not my work, not my work for the Lord, but His work. The work, and, and I want you to note that singular, the work, singular work of the Lord is what the text reads. Inasmuch as you know that your labor is not in vain, steadfast, unmovable. Couldn't be possible if it were our works. Plural, unmovable. Don't be moved away from the work of the Lord to your own work. That's, that's where most of your Christian friends are. Dearly beloved, it is His work. It's His work. 
That's why you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord because you're walking in the finished work of Jesus Christ. What a marvelous truth. What a, what a wonderful truth. What a wonderful chapter this, is, this has been. There are those of us who are going to be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, and then we'll return with Christ when He establish, uh, uh, establishes His kingdom here on earth. That includes the gathering of the nation of Israel, uh, uh, placing them in the kingdom, uh, were that when the kingdom ends, we're talking about the end of the thousand years here, and only when it ends, according to the text, will, will death be swallowed up in victory. Then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. I invite you to join us on Twitter. I invite you to join us on Facebook. Uh, that's where we have great fellowship. Uh, I invite you to, con to continue on in your studies uh, with us uh, through this epistle to the Corinthians. We've got one chapter to go. Don't know where we're going from there. I do pray for your direction. Uh, I'm, constantly, I'm constantly asking you, you folks to pray for the direction of this ministry we love you all. We truly do. Rest in Him. Until next time, this is Steve. Thanks for watching.